Why hello and welcome to the first video version of the squeeze here on YouTube. So before we get into the bets, first I just want to thank you guys if you're joining my channel, uh, if you've watched or if you've read the newsletter before and now you're watching the video, I'll give you a quick idea of why I wanted to do this and why I want to change the approach a little bit. The newsletter I've been doing for about six months, we've had some great success, we've got a winning record and we're up money. The video format is something I've always wanted to do. I feel like I can be more informative. I feel like there's the ability to be a little bit more communicative uh, as opposed to just a written letter every single morning. So I did want to transition into video. Hopefully it's uh, as consumable for you as reading. I don't intend to go very long on these, five, 10 minutes maybe, the same two or three bets. The only thing that might change is I would, would always try to get the newsletter out as early as I possibly could. Obviously, this is a bit more of a challenge because I can't just film and edit this whenever and post it. So sometimes it, it is when I can do it in the morning, I will, but sometimes it might be in the evening as well too, which we'll talk about with one of the bets tonight will obviously have effect on some closing line value, which might change things as well. So <clears throat> where we want to start is obviously the Toronto Argonauts won the Grey Cup last night, which was awesome. Such a fun, fun game. If you don't watch the CFL, you should. The semifinals and the Grey Cup were both outstanding, outstanding three football games and would highly recommend, if you're not a CFL fan, catch a game because from start to finish, you're going to see tons of Hail Mary passes, big bombs, and uh, you don't get the name recognition. And I know the CFL has got a lot of issues they need to work out with marketing, but uh, watch the CFL game if you can. It is a lot of fun. So... Uh, again, I'm not going to be editing these. It's just going to be me talking. It's going to be re me recommending the bets. And then hopefully in the comments, we can start uh, some chatting. I would love to do some live shows at some point as well, maybe on a Saturday or a Sunday morning. So it's all going to evolve. The backdrop's going to evolve. It's all going to change. And we're just going to roll with the punches. But I do hope that this is a little bit more fun. We all, There also still will be written versions when I don't have time to record or a day to record because I would like to try to do this every day as much as possible and uh, without, you know, burning yourself out because you don't want to bet too often. And this, the other thing I want to talk about is bankroll management real quick. So all of the bets that I recommend on here are for one unit, which means 1% of your bankroll. So whether you have $10 in your bank or $100 in your books, I should say, or 10,000, all the bets are for one unit. Because if you want to do this often and daily or weekly, you can't be throwing down, you know, a hundred bucks when you only have two hundred dollars to play with and also that's how you get in a lot of trouble too so if you want to bet every day and you're only betting one percent um you know that's the way you should be doing it and if that means you're only betting a dollar or two dollars that's fine to me it's more about talking about sports analyzing sports taking what i think i know and the research that i do and seeing if that makes sense or if that's right more so than the money to become a you know to make a living betting sports in my opinion isn't all that viable the same way it's hard to make a living playing blackjack. There aren't too many of those people. So make it fun. Don't, uh, you know, spend a fortune. And what I hope to do with this is I don't expect people to go and make the same three bets that I do every day. But maybe you'll see one that you really like and you want to bet five, ten bucks on it. Or one that you think, no, that doesn't make any sense. I don't like your analysis there at all. I'm going to go the opposite. And that's what I want you to get out of this as opposed to just tail all my bets and, you know, let's ride the wave to being millionaires is likely not going to happen. But if you want to bet them all, that's great. And we'll always keep track, of course. But if you decide you just want to pick one and bet five or 10 bucks to make that game fun, then that is that is the hope. So there's gonna be two bets today. The first one, uh, well, we had three. The first one I put on my Twitter account uh, was Wales or a draw against the USA in the World Cup final and a goal in the 88th minute uh, secured the draw between Wales and USA. So we hit that one, which is great. So our first bet that I want to talk about here tonight. Now, here's where we get into some trouble talking about closing line value, meaning the lines are going to change. So when I do this in the morning, the lines are one thing. And when I do them in the evening, they're going to be a different thing. So first thing is I love the app slash website called BetStamp, which lets you compare all the lines for all the different books that you've signed up for. And so you can get the best possible odds. One site might have a money line at minus 120, one might have it at minus 110. So if you're betting in volume, you always wanna be getting the best odds because that's how you're gonna make money long term. So the first game that I wanted to talk about was the New Orleans Pelicans and Golden State Warriors game tonight. So when I bet this, 
The over-under was at 232.5. I got that at minus 110 at DraftKings. The line has now moved all the way down to um, 227.5. So it's a five-point swing. But here's the analysis of why I went under. So Golden State, this is a road game for Golden State. They have not won, or sorry, they have won once. They won uh, their most recent road game, so they're 1-8 and eight on the road. Pelicans are 5-3 and three at home. New Orleans actually comes into this game as 10-point favorites, which I don't quite understand. I actually think the Warriors probably win this game, but I'm going to stick with the under instead. So on the season, both teams have played more towards the over. Uh, Golden State is 9-6 and six to the over, and New Orleans is 9-7 and seven to the over. However... Uh, following a war in the Warriors' last four games, following uh, against the spread loss, the under is four and zero. The under is also four and zero in the Warriors' last four Monday games. Um, and for New Orleans, you see a lot of the same trends. So the under is four and zero in New Orleans' last four games against a team with a losing record, which the Warriors are. Uh, under is five and one in their last six overall, and uh, five and one in their last six home games as well. So. They've really been playing the under lately. Now, that probably has a lot to do with Zion Williams, some missing time. He is expected to play tonight. However, Clay Thompson, on the flip side, is not expected to play. I think he's going to play the first half or the second half. Not quite sure. Uh, the under is 5-1 and one the last six times these two teams have met in New Orleans. And the under is 8-2 and two in their last 10. So, as you can see, when we bet this this morning at 232.5, Everybody's hammering the number, and that number is coming way, way down because of that. So do I like that at 227? It's still not terrible. Uh, the offense is on this season, so Golden State is averaging 117 points, and New Orleans is averaging 116. So when you add those together, you get 233. So the original over-under was really right to that. I find with basketball, the closing line numbers are pretty good in the morning, but you do have to be careful about injuries. So do I think that uh, this game will still go under? It's tough. At 227, I don't know if I love that. I think it might push over a little bit. If you can find it, when I look at bet stamp, you can still get this game. Uh, let's see, you can still, there are still some books that have 228. I see 228 and a half at Bet Ano, which I'm not too familiar with. I'm not sure. But keep in mind, you can also um, play around with it. So a lot of sites like DraftKings, Bet365, they're going to have alternative lines, <coughs> excuse me, where you can actually um, change the line and you can play with it. You're paid for the juice. But I do like 232. I like that really all the way up to about minus 130, 140. Um, I don't think, <coughs> excuse me, that that is a terrible bet. So the first bet I've got is Golden State, New Orleans under. I've got it at 232.5. If you want to play around with that number, I only have it at minus 110. So I really like my position there. But I do think this game is likely going to be under with the chances of Clay being out. And we don't know how many uh, minutes Zion is going to play. And the other bet that I like is the Monday night football game tonight. I've got an, another under. It's 43.5 for the 49ers and the Arizona Cardinals. So when we look at this matchup, we come into this game. This game's being played in Arizona. San Francisco 5-4. and four. Arizona is 4-6. and six. Both these teams skew more to wealth. Arizona is 5-5 five and five to the under. San Francisco is 6-3 and three to the under. So they've been an under team. They're 2-3 and three on the road. Arizona, weirdly enough, is 1-4 at home. So the theory that I subscribe to, which uh, I've learned recently and I have been sort of testing it in theory, is when a spread in the NFL is more than 9 or 9.5, bet the under. And the theory is that when there's that heavy of a favorite, if the favorite gets out to an early lead, they take their foot off the gas a little bit, or maybe they rest their starters in the fourth quarter, and they don't continue to run up the score. They don't put up 50 points. And the flip side of that is when a team is a heavy underdog by that, uh, 9.5 or 10 points, they're actually coming into this game with a little bit more enthusiasm or hype, and they're really expected to get blown out, and chances are they might play a little bit harder. This is also a prime time game, and Arizona's at home. So for them to be 10-point underdogs at home on Monday night, I feel like this is going to be a little bit more of a low-scoring game. The primetime games, both on Thursday and Monday this year, have traditionally gone under. 
So I'm going to test that theory. That's sort of my main theory. Now, also, the under is 7-1 and one in the 49ers' last eight games. Uh, under is also 6-1 and one following their last seven wins. Under is 10-2 and two in their last 12 games on grass. I don't know when they would not be playing on grass, but um, that gives you an under, uh, gives you an idea there. And also, the under is 9-1 and one in Arizona's last 10 Monday games. So the last 10 times they've played on Monday Night Football, Nine of the times it has gone under. The last six times that these two teams have met in Arizona, the under is five and one. So what this tells you is they're playing each other tight. They're playing each other close. I do not think that San Francisco is necessarily going to win this game by 10, but I do like the idea if they get up early, uh, chances are they don't keep their starters in the entire time or uh, Arizona. I mean, they're still only four and six and they've been pretty terrible at home, but they're not that bad that they're going to get completely blown out of the water. I think they're going to show up tonight. So uh, I like that bet. I got that number at minus 110 at bet Victor. That line has not moved. So just to recap, we've got it under with the Golden State Warriors and the New Orleans Pelicans. We got that at minus 110 for one unit. We've got under 43 and a half between Arizona and San Francisco tonight on Monday Night Football, also at minus 110. So again, this format, we're going to play with it. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. This is just going to be done in one take. I don't want it to be exceptionally long. I want this to be more conversational. I want you guys to share with me what you think. Um, follow me on Twitter at Tyler Connie. I post some quick hits there during the day as well. Uh, with other, I like to usually, this will usually be between two and three bets. And then I usually do some same game parlays or player props player props closer to game time on my Twitter feed as well. So if you like what you see, uh, feel free to subscribe. Let's have a conversation and let's just talk sports. Hopefully we win some bets uh, and we win more than we lose. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.